Hi. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning about two concepts that are commonly used in interest rate calculations. The first one is called the APR, annual percentage rate, and the second one is EAR, effective annual rate. To learn these concepts, let's uh, concentrate on a simple example. Let's say you have some money to deposit in a bank and your bank says that they will pay you 20% APR, so per year, basically, with semi-annual compounding, okay? Now, the question is, how much money will you have in your bank account at the end of a year, okay? So let's suppose you initially deposit $100 with them today, okay? There you deposit $100. So at the end of the year, what would be what would be your balance, right? Now you could say that okay, if the interest rate is twenty percent, this will be hundred twenty dollars, okay? Which is actually wrong, right? Because that would have been the case if there was only simple interest paid. But in reality, when you save money in a bank, you also earn interest on interest, and that is in your benefit. And basically what the amount you will have, your balance will be larger than $120. And what's gonna happen is actually this. So instead of having a single period, you will have in this case, two periods because within a year, there are two six months periods. So again, you will begin with a, an investment of um, $100 but instead of getting 20% over the course of the year, you will get half of it, so 10% every six months. So your balance after six months will be $110. Okay, so 10%, so you earn 10% on your original $100. And over the, so this is, let's say 10% over here, and over the second six month period, you will again earn 10% not only on your original balance, but on your current balance. So this is what why we say that you earn interest on interest, right? So the total amount of interest you earn here is $10. But now on your original, original $100, you will again earn $10. But on top of that, you had this $10 already earned in the first six months. So you will earn a further dollar of interest because it's 10% on that as well. So your end in balance at the end of the year will be $121. And your return is going to be not 20%, but your effective annual rate would actually be 21% in this case. And in general, the formula for EAR calculation is that you begin with the APR, so it's 1 plus, APR divided by the compound and frequency. So in this case, this was two because there are two periods with semi-annual co uh, compounding to the power M and you subtract one. So to illustrate this, in this case, EAR is one plus 20% divided by two to the power two minus, oops, sorry, just need to move box there, minus one. And if you make this calculation, that turns out to be 21%. Now let me show you another example. So for example, what, what if we have monthly uh, compound and frequency? Okay, so let me clear the table. So again, let's say we have a quote of 20% APR, but now we have monthly compounding, okay? You can still use the same formula, but let's see that on our timeline as well. So now we have 12 months 
less than the year, right? So six all the way down to 12. So that means that we will actually receive 12 interest rate payments. So we will again begin with 100. So at, in the first period, we will earn basically 20% divided by 12. Okay, so that will be already our first interest payment added to our initial balance. And the next month, again, we will earn 20% uh, divided by 12 on the balance over here, right? So which is, again, we are earning interest on interest and so on. So in this case, the EAR would be 1 plus 20% divided by 12 to the power 12 minus 1. And I've just done this calculation beforehand. So this should be 21.94%. And as you can see, this, this, was, uh, this is higher than original figure with semi-annual compounding. So this is with monthly compounding, okay? With semi-annual compounding, the figure was 21%. And the reason is simple. So as the compounding frequency increases, you are earning interest more often, and after that, each period, you keep earning interest on interest. So overall balance at the end of the year will be higher. If you actually go to the video description, we have a separate video where you can uh, basically where we show you how to co make these computations in Excel as well. So in fact, there is a specific uh, function in Excel which helps you compute EAR quite easily. So if you want, you can check that out as well. Then the next question to ask is, you know, what if we keep increasing this compounding frequency, right? So in the case of um, um, semi-annual, we had uh, two periods within the year. Now we have 12. Could we keep increasing that? And the answer is yes. So you could have, for example, weekly compounding. So in this case, we can divide this by 52 and raise it to the power 52. We could have even daily compounding, right? So we could divide this by 365 and raise it to 365. And each time, the EAR would keep increasing. It won't increase massively, but it will be, so weekly EAR will be higher than monthly, and daily EAR will be higher than weekly. And there is a limiting case. So that's the last thing I would like to show you in this video. The limiting case is called continuous compound. Okay, continuous compound. So in this limiting case, basically, you are earning a small or a tiny interest at every point, right? It, uh, it Basically, you are continuously earning interest, but a very small amount within the year. So initially, remember, we had our one-year period. So this is the start. This is the end, okay? With semi-annual uh, compounding, we split it into two. So, for example, with quarterly, we would have four. Then with monthly, we would split everything into uh, 12. And then uh, with weekly, each time these intervals are getting smaller and smaller. Now, in the limit with continuous compounding, essentially what's happening is this. So this formula, where we have 1 plus APR, divided by m to the power m minus 1. So m is getting higher and higher. So in the limit, this uh, formula actually becomes like this, where this e is a mathematical constant, is the base of natural logarithm, right? So in our case, with 20% APR, if you have continuous compounding, so e to the power 20% minus 1, this would be 22.14%. And you might wonder, well, if we are continuously earning interest, why this is not becoming infinite? And the reason is simple. Because M gets quite high, yes, you are continuously earning interest payments, but they are getting smaller and smaller as well. So then the whole thing doesn't blow up, okay? So again, we can compare this to our original figures. So for example, with semi-annual compounding, the figure was 21%. And with monthly, 
compounding, it was 21.94%. And as you can see with continuous compounding, this is higher and this is the highest you would get, right? So because we are already continuously compounding, so the EAR, the EAR cannot increase any further. Okay, that's it for this video. So I hope you, I hope you have enjoyed it and see you in another uh, tutorial. Bye for today.